Eh, la temporada pasada pues, empezamos con muchísimos lanzamientos, eh, tenemos el liderazgo en el mercado mexicano y este es un lanzamiento más, eh, ahora este es un lanzamiento bien especial eh, como saben en Quantum Break lo trabajamos eh, con Rocket Studios eh, trabajó cerca de Microsoft para traer esta nueva historia y además es el primer juego que lanzamos en Xbox One y Windows 10 al mismo tiempo eh, una cosa importante eh, que me gustaría que sepan es que el equipo de Xbox es quien va a llevar toda la, la parte de gaming para Microsoft, independientemente de si es en la consola o en Windows 10. Eh, eso sí, es, es lo que quería compartir. Y bueno, eh, la verdad es que pensamos que este juego eh, nos va a ayudar a seguir eh, construyendo eh, comunidades, eh, no importando dónde quieras jugar. ¿no? Eh, y bueno, para, para platicarles más detalles del juego, tenemos aquí un invitado especial, Tomás Puja, eh, de Remedy Studios. Él viene desde Finlandia y viene desde hacer un tour por varios países y hoy está con nosotros. Entonces, Tomás, welcome, welcome to Mexico y los dejo con Tomás. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me? Okay. No, I don't. I don't need it. Um, so. He needed it for. No, I'm okay. So I need to use it. Yes, please. Show's over. Hello. Yes. So well, there's a slight delay, so that's why I'm a little bit confused. Or maybe the time difference. I don't know. Maybe I'm hearing things. Anyway, uh, yes, my name is Thomas. I'm uh, from Remedy. Awesome to be here. We know we have a lot of. Uh, support the fans here, uh, not just in South America, but in Mexico, so it's great that we were able to come down here. And thank you for uh, coming here. Now, this event is really all about you actually sitting down and playing Quantum Break. Uh, we've talked about it, talked about the game for many years, and really now it's just about you actually experiencing it and playing it. That, that's the important thing. Having said that, uh, what would we, of course we have to have some PowerPoint and a presentation, so I'll put it for that, I'll try to make it entertaining and short. So I'll throw through a couple of slides, a little bit about what it's like at Remedy, and the philosophy we have at Remedy in making games, I like the Sonic shirt, um, and then we show the history of Quantum Break, a little bit of information about Windows 10, and that's it, and then you can go play the game. And of course, thanks for all of the for setting this up. Very cool. Okay, I'm going to press the green button on this extremely advanced clicker. So, this is a video that we internally made for Microsoft that um, kind of shows what life is like at Remedy in Finland. You know, we are, things are a little bit strange. We drink a lot of alcohol and, and coffee. So, uh, anyway, here we go. The majority of the cinematics for the game, this is where they have been uh, shot for the floor of the city, the, the walls that is, I don't have a copy yet. Alright. And this is where you get uh, scanned and basically radiated so heavily that your life expectancy drops by several years, but it's all part of uh, the, you know, the fun and games of making video games. And this is the sweat room. This is where all of our key actors have spent many days, even weeks, doing performance capture. Take a look. I believe Sean Ashmore has been here the last time. Great smell, that man. I'm Jack Joyce! Stop! No, 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 stop him. All right, getting a performance, not, not, not being easy. Everybody, oh boy, sorry about that. Thank you, we're very kind. I'm not going to go into acting, don't worry. Uh, so that was Mr. Sam Lake uh, at the end of the video. So Sam is the creative director of Quantum Break. Um, and if you go way back and play Max Payne 1, he was also the face of Max Payne in the first game, and he brought Max Payne and Alan Wake, so he's been at Remedy for 20 years. Um, so these two slides will talk about the philosophy Remedy has in making games, 
this is something that Sam really strongly believes in and sort of really uh, distills into all of us at Remedy. So when we start making games, we really start thinking about feelings first. So what do we want the player to feel when they play a Remedy game? That's much more important than thinking, okay, multiplayer, feature X, feature Y, feature Z. And we start from characters and story. We're really a storytelling studio. We always have been. We're very much storytellers, and games are just the medium we have chosen to um, tell our stories. And we spend a lot of time, you know, enjoying pop culture. I'm sure that goes for all of us here. You know, we watch a lot of movies. Uh, a lot of TV, a lot of books, a lot of music, and that somehow always distills, to, distills back into Remedy's games. Um, so we always take something that's familiar, in the case of Quantum Ray, it's time travel, and then we put sort of our own spin to it, like make it somehow Finnish and weird. Weird is good. So we make very cinematic action games, so the core gameplay is often all about action, to make it look cinematic, to make it look good. We build almost all of our own technology uh, in us and Remedy. It's very much a Finnish kind of Scandinavian thing, that's just something we do. You know, it's dark all the time, every, every time, so let's stay indoors and drink and create good technology and games. So all our games, from Max Payne to Alan Wake to Quantum Break, they're all grounded in reality, in a real world setting. That's very important to us. So Max Payne was set in uh, New York, but a very sort of Hollywood version of New York, and the, the tourist version of New York that we saw. Uh, and then the Pacific Northwest of the United States in Alan Wake, very much inspired by Twin Peaks, well, and Finland as well, because really all we have is lakes and forests. And then Quantum Break uh, is very much inspired by present day Boston, like a sort of Eastern uh, American uh, college town. So we set the games in the real world, but then we put that layer on top. So it was that hard boiled pulp fiction detective stuff in Max Payne. But then in our way, we had supernatural elements and horror. And now with Quantum Break, we have time travel, hence we have a little bit of a science fiction, but all grounded in as much reality as we can. And in this industry, you're only as good as your last game. We all have regular well remedy. Every game you make has to be as good as possible. I'm stating the obvious here, but we take that very, very, very seriously. Remedy. We spend many years making games, and we want to make sure they're as good as they can be. Um, and in many ways, Quantum Break is the ultimate remedy game. So that doesn't mean it's the last game, far from it. Uh, we're only getting started in our 21st year, but it's 21 years of making games, so Quantum Break is the sort of combination of all, all those years of learning and work, especially when it comes to live action. So a bit about the history of Quantum Break. We announced the game back in 2013 when the Xbox One was announced, so we announced the game quite early. And that's been some source of confusion throughout the years that we've changed the actor or the lead character and all that stuff. Uh, so let's show you what the game looked like back then all the way to present day. Sean's an awesome guy, very good to work with. 
Uh, he's been working with us for over two and a half years now. Now, at the beginning and the bad guy of the story, Quantum Break, is being played by Aiden Gillen, who might know him from the Game of Thrones. I know him very much from The Wire, the best police TV show of all time, in my opinion. Um, so he plays Paul Serene, the villain of the story. So, some things have changed, and Mostly Quantum has been the same from the beginning. We announced it, so it's always been a story-driven cinematic third-person action game. And the central thing has always been that you're trying to stop time from ending. So this experiment in the beginning of the game that breaks time, you'll see it when you play it. Uh, it breaks time, and that's what you're trying to uh, stop from happening. Also, from the very beginning, we wanted to give you, the players, a chance to shape the story. Not change, shape, so you get to do things in the game that shape what happens. So, the way you can think about this experience is with, together with live action is that the game is about the heroes. The game is about Jack Joyce and his story. But then we do have the live action inside the game, and that actually is about the villains. That's much more about Paul Serene's company, Monarch Solutions. What are they doing about Jack and how they're reacting to that? So that's something very unique. You get to experience both sides. Uh, there's four episodes in total inside the game, and there's five acts of the game. Each episode is about 20 to 22 minutes. Length changes depending on what you choose to do in the game, because what you decide to do in the game actually changes not just the game, but the live action. Think about it, it's pretty crazy. So we have four episodes, but since they change depending on what you do, you might add a scene to it or something like that. There's over 40 variations in total, which is why the show has to stream. 78 gigabytes of data. We also have these things called quantum ripples in the game, which are things you can interact with. And you're like, what did I just do? And then you watch a live action episode, you might find people talking about that thing you just did earlier on. So now that you're probably really confused, it's actually quite simple. You go there, play the game, and you understand how this works, but I'll quickly also explain it here. You play through a junction of the game. One junction is many levels. You play as Jack. You get to the junction, which is a short playable sequence where you actually play as Paul. Paul can see into the future, because there was this experiment, right? And you have to make a choice in the junction. There's always two choices. You make the choice, and then you get to watch a full 20 minute live action episode that will somewhat accommodate the choice you made. Or you can skip the episode and keep playing whichever you want. And then you play the other act, get to the second junction, and so on. So it's quite simple. Right, a little bit about Windows 10. Now, we have a Windows 10 version running here, Contrax is coming out on Windows 10. But we're still working on it, it's still in development, so the version here is not finished. It's only running 1080, 30 frames per second. Final game will run 1080, 60 frames per second. Will support 4K, uh, mouse and keyboard, obviously, and you get a bunch of nice Xbox Live features such as shared uh, games. So you can play to level uh, Act 2 on Xbox One and pick up from Act 2 on Windows 10 if you want. All this information is available in the press kit. Um, and that uh, is the next, next slide information, so make sure you get that. And the nice bit is that if you pre-order the uh, uh, Xbox One version of Total Break, from the Xbox One store you actually get the Windows 10 version for free. Thank you, Microsoft. And here's some more details. So all Xbox One copies of Quantum Break include Remedy's previous game, Alan Wake, as well as both of the DLCs. Now, these are the Xbox 360 back compact versions. Um, so we have all this information, now we have a nice uh, bundle out here uh, in, in Mexico that you can see there. Uh, like I said, you can get more information from, from the press kit, so you get all the details you want. So having said that, just to wrap up and the summary of what the game is, it's a very story-driven cinematic third-person action game. We're all about the story. So the game is about the heroes, but then you watch the show and learn about the villains. And as you get to shape the story, that means there's a lot of replay value, especially for a single player game. You can definitely play the game a couple of times to learn some new stuff. And the time powers are what makes us different from the other third-person action games. You'll see that when you play. The time power in cover, the AI reacts to that very well, like it will always try to get you out of cover. We have really stable, you know, stable air brackets and audio. 
Um, we have really good digital acting in the game, a lot of nuance in the acting performance. That's why we need good actors, we can actually get their performance into the game. And it's a new game, you know, it's something a little bit different, you know, hopefully everybody will give the new game a chance. And we have full, fully localized version for uh, for Echo here, so uh, not just subtitles, but of course, uh, voice over. Having said all that, uh, you know, we have a lot of fans out in this region, so thank you for your support throughout the years. Thank you for coming to this event, really appreciate that. And uh, I've really talked enough, so Apple Gift Corporate is out of Windows 10, Xbox One. Please uh, go, go play the game and experience it for yourself. It's not just the demo, it's the entire beginning of the game. You can literally play it for two hours. Thank you. Thank you.